Hi guys and welcome back to Switch Up. Today, thanks to Irene for joining us on this video, we are going to show you the best farming simulators on the Nintendo Switch. Yeah, so we're going to look at some of the best, as Mark said. Mm -hmm. We're not including straight out simulation games, are we? No. So we're just talking about ones where you generally inherit a farm or something like that and play out a story. So with that said, uh, let's crack on. First on the list then, we have Stardew Valley. So Stardew is probably one of the most famous, I would say now, so, yeah, on the yeah. Switch. Um, fantastic, colorful art style. Mm -hmm. Retro, but new at the same time. It's got the pixel style that some people seem to complain about, but when it's done right, as Glenn always Absolutely. says, it's, uh, it's lovely. Great music, there's tons that you can do, and they've added to it over the years. You can now do, I think, you can do co-op with a friend locally by joining two Switches together. Yes, you can. Yeah, so it's not on one Switch, which is a shame. So they're still supporting the game, even, what, a good couple of years now after exactly it Exactly that. It's just as popular, I think, as it always Absolutely, was. Absolutely, yeah. Let's get one of the most obvious games out of the way first. It is a game that holds a legacy name, actually. Harvest Moon Light of Hope. But the series had a name change some years ago, so it's different, to say the least, from some of the earlier Harvest Moon titles. The farming is very basic, so if you are a very basic person, you may find some farming enjoyment in this title. It's just that I find the graphics to be very off-putting, because they are coming off as some internet flash game. Light of Hope feels very confined and restricted, so it's not a game for everyone. I can't recommend this title unless you find it for like five dollars. This is a game that I reviewed on my channel, so if you want to see my full review, go over to my channel. Bookbound Brigade is a 2D puzzle platformer wrapped within a Metroidvania-styled world. The literary world has been turned upside down by the theft of the Book of Books, and its pages must be retrieved to restore order. Featuring a host of famous fictional characters such as Dracula and Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz, and real historical figures such as Queen Victoria, you do not play as just one character, but rather the whole brigade in one movement. That's eight characters by the time you are finished. You will earn individual abilities for each member as you play, which can then be used to aid the whole team and progress you through the expansive areas. Special formations will also be learnt that will help you traverse countless pitfalls and obstacles and defeat a number of enemies on your quest. Throw in a lovely hand-drawn art style and comical writing and you have yourself a quirky, fun and unique experience which releases on the Switch on the 30th of January. Regional prices are on your screen now. Good luck. You bling well need it. Next up then we have a game called Stranded Sails. Now this is slightly different in that you are uh, washed up on a desert island you're shipwrecked and you mm -hmm. have to build uh, somewhere to live basically from there. You have to find the rest of your crewmates and they will all uh, bring skills to you, okay. such as cooking, and they'll teach you how to do that. And you have to explore further away from your base, mm. building it up as you go along. This is actually quite an interesting game. One thing I will say about this one that I didn't like so much was the stamina bar was oh, okay. very strict. I know a lot of these games have stamina bars, but in this game, especially when you're having to move across islands and sail across the water. Yeah. But I did like the concept mm -hmm. of, of being stranded away. It reminded me a little bit of uh, The Sims Castaway, if you yeah. remember that game. Did you find Wilson? No, no I didn't. It's a shame. It is a shame. <laughs> Now, Gleaner Heights. You have most likely not heard about this game. It's a very indie game. So Gleaner Heights is like a much cheaper version of Stardew Valley. It is definitely trying to look like Stardew Valley, but it isn't nearly as good. It doesn't even come close. Now, now, I am not going to be too harsh on this game because this game could actually be for some of you guys out there. You know, it gets the job done with your basic farming, collecting, money management and villager friendships. It is simply okay, but it isn't completely terrible either. So you must be very hungry for a Stardew-like game to pick this up. Say you are completely done with Stardew Valley and have done everything there. You want something that is similar, Gleaner Heights is there for you then. And that is fair enough. Next up then we have Graveyard Keeper. This was a messed up game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is a messed up game. So basically you're essentially a, well you, you get hit by a car in the first five minutes and you die, don't want to spoil it. Right. I haven't kind of spoiled it there. And you're in this other universe and you're a graveyard keeper for whatever reason, because okay. that's what happens when you die. <laughs> Fair enough. And uh, you can like 
dissect the bodies. So you do autopsies on them and you can like sell the parts or you can use them in other things. And then you can like dump the bodies in the river. It's really weird. Do you know what I like? We've done three games so far. Yeah. Of what you would have expected to be, get a farm, yeah. props. They've all been different, haven't they? Completely yeah, different. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's why I like this one. It does, as these all do, get real grindy. It does have the stamina yeah. bar that Glenn mentioned in yeah. the other one. But I actually really enjoyed this game. Very good. Yonder. Now, this is a very relaxing game. Probably one of the most relaxing games ever. Since there is no fighting and you have all the time in the world to complete your objectives. The farming, however, is very on the simple side. But in my playthrough, I found that farming potatoes was my main source of income. There is no currency in Yonder, but you deal with trading items for items. I enjoyed all my time in Yonder and it is one that I can recommend to you. I also reviewed this game on my channel. Next thing we've got Little Dragon's Cafe. Now this is probably more traditional going back to that mm -hmm. standard, you inherit something. So you have a cafe obviously. Uh, your mother's not very well and you and your sister or your brother, depending on who you choose to play as, um, need to take over the family business. Standard, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. Um, but then the dragon comes into play, so you have this small baby dragon. Where does it come from? I can't remember. I think you're, you're given an egg or something. It's been a while since oh, I've played you be? it. It does tell you where it comes <laughs> from. Um, but the, the idea is that the dragon has magical properties that will heal your mother. Okay. So you have to help him grow nice. by cooking the food and stuff and, and collecting the bits and bobs whilst keeping the calf running at the same time. Oh, that's cool. Do people cool. come to it? Yes, they do. Yeah, and you have to nice. serve them up and whatnot. Um, it's got a lovely art style. It looks almost like um, pencil coloured. Yes. Like sketched and, and coloured in. Yeah. Um, loading times are a bit of a pain going mm -hmm. in and out of houses, which is a shame. Right. But it looks delightful. It's a really nice game. Quite expensive on the eShop. Um, yeah. Look for the physical copy, for sure. We mentioned this one in our addictive games list, one of the last we ones we did. did. Yeah, you're right. Um, and this was on sale recently. I almost picked this one up. I'm kind of annoyed I didn't. Yeah, it'll go on sale again. Yeah. My time at Porsche is a very colourful life simulator where you can do a whole bunch of different things, including farming. However, in this game you plant your trees, flowers and vegetables into boxes and not exactly down into the ground, if that matters to you. But you can truly customise your entire farm the way that you want it to look, so it is very nice. You can also have livestock such as cows and chickens, etc. I have always praised this game and I think it is a must play for anyone that is a fan of the life simulator genre. However, be aware that the Switch version of this game struggles a bit in its frame rate and has terribly long loading screens. But overall, I recommend my time at Porsche. Alright, the last one from us then is Farm Together. Now this is what I bought based on the recommendations of quite a few of you after my Harvest Life review. Harvest Life was basically a stripped down, I suppose you could call it a mobile looking version of Stardew right. Valley, okay. um, but you could do split screen multiplayer, which was great. Mm -hmm. But then Farm Together came along and you could do four player split screen, oh, nice. much nicer visuals, uh, and it's a better game really. Mm -hmm. So I bought this one, this is a really nice little title. I would say there are some aspects that do remind me of a mobile game in a negative way though. like. Just the way that you expand your horizons, it's almost like you go to the little sign and you spend the money that you've really had to grind to get mm -hmm. to expand the area and it just feels like what you'd have to do, it's like 50p to uh, Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So for me, I didn't actually like this one as much as some of the other titles on the list, but if you've got a few players to play with, split screen, four player co-op. It's a big selling point, isn't it? Definitely. Yeah. Dragon Quest Builders 2. Farming is actually very good in Dragon Quest Builders 2. It is also a huge part of the entire theme of the game. So here you have both building and farming, along with story and quests as well. Some plants require you to build so that the plants are underwater, and you get to sort of recruit helpers to help you with harvesting and watering. Dragon Quest Builders 2 is a great title with a whole lot of value for your money. I have seen people go totally crazy in this game in the building. Building structures that are amazing. So this game actually provides a lot of freedom, even though the story is very linear and that was sort of off-putting, but overall a very good game. Thank you SwitchUp for having me again. Now, if you want to check out what I do on YouTube, you can check out my channel, link in the 
description. Right, that's our five, and thank you again to Irene for her five. We haven't mentioned Doraemon Story of Seasons. We know that that's one that lots of people would recommend, but we haven't played it, so please do let us know how good it is in the comments below. Exactly that. Yeah, we downloaded the demo. The demo seems really fun, but we cannot recommend something we haven't yeah, properly it's played. Demo, exactly right, yeah. Big thanks to Irene for her suggestions. Be sure to go and check out her channel. All the links and stuff are going to be down below. She's really a good YouTuber. She's not one of these silly clickbait ones. No, absolutely. She's a good person, yeah, isn't she? Yeah, great stuff. Uh, yeah, thank you to our patrons, as always, for your continued support, and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. For all things Switch all the time. Keep your Switch up. See ya! I can that was, I need to do a better one than that. It was a bit muted. This <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> is like a manga. <laughs> Ready? Mm -hmm. Good. <laughs> I'm good.